Hey there, welcome to Biz Intelligence. In this video, we will take a look at how to calculate running total for the grouped and non-grouped data in Power Query Editor. So let's get started. Let's take a look at the data source that I have loaded in Power Query Editor. I have fields called date, employee ID, product ID, and unit sold. In the first example, we will see how to calculate running total for this non-grouped data where we'll calculate running total for each row. So let's get started. Now the first step that we need to perform is we will add index field. For that we will go to add column option and here we will click on index column and we will click on from one. Now this will add one index field which will have number starting from one incremented by one. Now we are gonna use or we are, we are gonna take a help of this field to calculate running total. So let's go and again add one more column. Let's go to add column and here click on custom column option. And here we will use list.range function, list.range. So list.range function will return us the range of values from the list. And here it takes list as a first argument. And here we are going to provide the unit sold field because we want the list of range of values from this field to calculate running total. But if we take a look at our data set, we have fields, but we do not have lists. Our unit sold is a field and that is not in the form of list. So first we will have to understand how to convert the field of the data table into list. So let's go and see this first. Let's discard this custom column operation and I will show you how to convert the field of the table into list. I will go to home tab, click on new source. Let's click on blank query. And here I will say is equal to, and I will use the name of the table, which is sales data. And in the square bracket, after the name of this table in a square bracket, I will say unit sold. Now, when I refer to a field of the table this way, it will give me that field, but you can see that field is written in the form of list. You can see that here. Same way, what we can do is we can refer to the previous step of our table. And as you know, the previous step returns us the result after performing that step. And that result is, is in the form of table. And from that table, we can extract the unit sold field. So instead of this table name, we can use previous step name. So let's again go to our data set here. Let's again go to add column, click on custom column. Uh, let's give it a name called run underscore total. And here let's use list.range function. And here we need to provide list, which is unit sold field. And we are gonna refer to previous step, which is added index in our case. So to refer to previous tape, the method is first we need to write hash, then double quote, and the name of the previous step, which is added index, double quote, close, and in square bracket, name of the field, which is unit sold, square bracket, close. Now this unit sold field will come as list, and from that list, we want to start from zero, okay? And here you need to provide the number. This number will be used to return the range of values using list.range function. So if I write two, it will give me two values in that list, but we cannot use the static number here. Instead of writing two, we can use index field, which itself has the number of values that are required to calculate running total. If you take a look at the second row, it says we need two values from the first row. So this is 45 and 78. So we can use this index field. Let's close this, this dot range function. Now let's go and see the result that we are gonna get using this formula. Click on okay and you can see we are getting list. Now let's go to the sale and let's check what we have in that list. You can see for the first row, we have only one value in the list, which is 45. Because our index field has value one, it will return us one value. Let's go to second row and take a look at the values stored in that list, which is 45 and 75, 78. Now you can see index field has value two, and hence we have got two values, which is 45 starting from 45 to 78. Now the next step that we need to perform is we have these range of values and we need to 
calculate the sum of these range of values. So we will again go to formula bar of the last step and we will take this list dot range function inside list dot sum function. So what we are saying here is whatever values we are getting using list dot range, we want to add them and give us the running total. Press enter and you can see for the first row we have only 45 because we have only one value when it moves to second row 45 plus 78 is 123. So we have our running total using list.sum and list.range function. Now in second example we need to calculate running total by group that means let's take a field called product id and when we calculate running total for product id group it will calculate running total for the product id 1 and when it will move to next product id it will reset the running total now you can see that re this running total is continued till the end of the last row of this data set but what we are gonna do in the next example that we are gonna calculate running total for the specific group only when it will move to next group the running total will resume so let's see how to do that we have copied same table here and what we are gonna do is first step we will go and transform this data table and we will group this data table so let's go to transform and click on group by and here we will say group this data set using product id field and the name of the field will be data and what we are going to perform operation on that group data is we can sum of that group or take average mean max but we do not want to perform any operation on that group data and we want all the rows of that group here we will say all rows and click on ok now this will give us the group as per product id and you can see for product 7 we have all the values of that specific product id when it will move to product 1 we will have all the values of all the fields for that specific product id now what we are gonna do is we are again going to use that list dot sum and list dot range function but we cannot directly use them the way we used in the previous example it is not that straightforward to use the those two lines here on this group data because this time we need to perform that operation in this data set not on this data set the table which is wrapped inside this cell so what we need to do is i will go to the previous example data set I will go to advanced editor let's go to home click on advanced editor and i will copy those two steps that we performed first is added index and second one is the function which has function called list dot sum and list dot range let's copy these two lines click on cancel and what we are going to do is this is the data set of our second example i will go and create one custom function which will have those two steps and two steps will be performed on the data set which is wrapped inside this table now let's go to home and click on new source and click on blank query let's go to advanced editor and let's delete this source and paste those two lines here let's replace this source with added custom step name now here first step which is added index takes the previous step which is a table a result written by that previous step and here we need to take one table let's call it tbl target and i will declare this as variable here at the top bracket and this is going to be the variable now this function will take one table as an input and that table will be used to add index column and then it will calculate the running total on that specific table only now let's click on done our function is ready here let's name this function function run total which takes one input as a table let's go to our data set for the second example and here we are gonna say add custom column and instead of custom column this time we will click on invoke custom function option which will help us to use that function we just created let's call it transform data table and here and here we will call function called run underscore total which we created and here we need to provide one input as a one field as an input so this field called data will be an input value for this function so we'll select data from the drop down and click on ok now what it will do is this function will be performed 
on this field and this field has values in the form of table so this function will go into that table of each cell and add index field and add one more field which will calculate the running total now let's click on ok and we have third column which is transform data tbl which has again values in the form of table and you can take a look at the data inside that table is date field employee id product id unit sold and index field is added here and this is the running total for that group only now what we can do is we right click on this transform data table field let's click on remove other columns because we do not need other columns now let's click on this expand button make sure you uncheck this box which says use original column name as prefix and here again make sure you uncheck this field called index because we do not need that field anymore now click on ok and we will have our running total field ready now let's take a look at the product id for product id 7 it has started calculation from here when it moves to next product id you can take a look at the running total which is reset here for that product id when it reaches to the last row of that first product I, uh, product id 7 and when it moves to next product id it resets the running total for that product and it again resumes the pro running total for that product only so this is how you can calculate running total for the grouped and non-grouped data if you are new on our channel then subscribe us and visit our channel to watch more such videos do not forget to like and share this video with your friends thank you for watching